Inna alhamdulillah Indeed our praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghfiruhu So we praise Allah, we ask Allah for his help And we seek Allah's forgiveness Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina We seek refuge and protection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from any evil or any sin that we commit and any consequences that come as a result of those actions. وَمَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, absolutely no one can lead that person astray. وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْهُ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to veer off of the path, no one but He, Jalla Jalaluhu, can bring that person back to the path. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِكَ لَهُ And I, Ismail, I stand before you believing in the depth of my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Lord, our Creator, our Sustainer, the one to whom we see as our only object of worship. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّا سَيِّدَنَا وَمَوْلَانَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنِنَا مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And I stand before you believing in the depth of my heart that Allah sent us an example. The comfort of our eyes, our master, our Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Wa qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabih al-aziz, ba'da an aqula a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim, wa shamsi wa duhaha, wal qamari idha talaha, amma ba'd. So we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we send our love and salams upon his beloved, our Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And as was his sunnah, as was his practice every Friday, you and I are gathered on this Eid of the week, this Jumu'ah day, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reorient ourselves to that which benefits us both in this life and in the hereafter. And inshallah ta'ala, many of us are starting to feel the breezes of Ramadan, nafahatul Ramadan, they are upon us. And we are in this blessed month of Sha'ban, which has Sha'aba, yani it has appeared between the month of Rajab and the month of Ramadan. And the month of Sha'ban provides us an opportunity to get ready for the month of Ramadan. Just as the Sunnah prayer before our Salah gives us a chance to um, prepare for the Fard Salah, so does the month of Sha'aban give us an opportunity to prepare for the month of Ramadan. And in the month of Ramadan, there's a lot of things that go on that are, of course, very important to our spiritual being. It is a month of Qur'an. And we know this, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ أَلَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنَ Right, as it says in Surah Al-Baqarah, that this is the month in which Allah sent down the Qur'an. And it is the month in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would revise the Qur'an with Ainu Jibreel alayhi salam. And there's a very interesting um, hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are informed by the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was ajwadun nas. The Prophet was the most generous of human beings. And the hadith goes on to say he was the most generous in the month of Ramadan Hina yalqahu Jibreel When he would meet with Angel Jibreel alayhi salam And I've always found that quite fascinating Because the idea is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, You know he was actually a man who owned property He had some level of wealth He was not someone who kept the wealth for himself In terms of money that he had in his home But he had property right His wives had their homes He had other property in Medina but he never went to bed with, you know, a stack of coins or darahim or whatever near him. And so anything he had in the day of wealth, he would give it out. He would apportion it to people. And he was known to be ajwadun nas, right? From among the most generous of people, or rather the most generous person. But the hadith says, he is even more generous in the month of Ramadan. Hina yalqahu Jibreel. When he would meet with Angel Jibreel. So I used to always wonder, what is the connection? What is the connection of meeting with Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, have to do with his, his being described as being even more generous 
in the month of Ramadan. Inu Jibreel is not giving the Prophet ﷺ more money to make him more generous. He's not giving him that. What he's providing him وسلم, is Qur'an. There's a saying in the Arabic language, فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِيهِ The one who has nothing can't give anything. Right? The one who has nothing can't give anything. So if you don't have free time, you can't give of your time. If you don't have extra money, you can't give it in charity. The Prophet wasallam is receiving revelation and the revelation is in a sense filling him up spiritually. Such that when he goes to the people in the day while fasting, he is able to give them more of his time, more of his wisdom, more of his money if he has. And the Qur'an serves as the way by which the Prophet ﷺ was replenished every night of the month of Ramadan. And you and I can receive that same replenishment every night in the month of Ramadan. If we give our time to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those nights. It will be as if we are doing this Yalqahu Jibreel. We are doing this meeting with Jibreel alayhi salam. You have to be replenished. You have to be filled up spiritually in order to see it manifest in your actions in the day to day. And so the Quran in the month of Ramadan is not simply going to allow you to do more ibadah in the month of Ramadan. In the, in the very basic sense of ibadah. It is going to allow you to do everything else that you want to do. If it is for the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So if you're someone who, many people for example in the month of Ramadan, they set the month of Ramadan as their month of paying their zakah. It's very common practice. People you know, want to capitalize on the barakah of Ramadan. This is of course an understandable thing. And so they set their zakah calendar for the year in the month of Ramadan. So many people try to increase in their charity and give their zakah, which is fard upon you, if you are oblig obligated to pay zakah, in the month of Ramadan. And people always try to find ways to give more. And we, the communities even ask for more in the month of Ramadan. And we want to know well, how can we give more? How can we have more so we can give? Right? You have to have in order to give. And so the month of Ramadan revives you. It replenishes your bank of barakah. Right? Your bank of barakah becomes replenished in Ramadan and that allows you to then do what you want to do in the month of Ramadan in terms of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being of more benefit to humanity and being able to do all the things that we hope to do in that month of Ramadan. And so with that in mind, I challenge myself and all of you that when the month of Ramadan comes, we don't come to the month of Ramadan having not done any of the preparation before. Right? We have, we have you know, at least three weeks of this month, until the month of Ramadan or a little less than that now. Use that time to slowly start to build your habits for the month of Ramadan to come. So that when you have those nights in Ramadan, you're ready to give yourself to the recitation of the Quran and to fulfilling or rather refilling your barakah bank in that month. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه قال الله تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما أما بعد There's an amazing principle in the deen that becomes very clear in the month of Ramadan. In the deen, we have this idea that in order to be filled with something, you must actually remove first. What do I mean? Our, our shahada, our testimony of belief as Muslims, first asks us to remove the idea of a false ilah, a false god. We say, Ashhadu an la ilaha. Right? There is no God. Nothing can be like God. Now I can fill it with the right idea. Illallah. I have to get rid of the false to make sure that I have the good in place. When we believe that in the depths of our heart, we call that ikhlas. Right? Sincerity. The word ikhlas in Arabic comes from the verb akhlasa yukhlisu which was used to describe the process of creating butter or ghee. When you take the fat from the animal and you put it under heat, the impurity in the animal's fat comes to the top. And then you do what? It becomes a foam at the top and you can remove it. You remove the impurity so that you have the pure ikhlas you have the pure belief there. And the month of Ramadan shows us I can remove those things in my life. I can remove even permissible things like food and drink. I can remove those things so I can be filled in another way, in an even better way. So the Prophet wasallam is giving in the month of Ramadan and he's not replenishing his time and effort with food but rather the barakah of the month. And when it comes to our wealth in the month of Ramadan, we pay many of us our zakah as I said in this month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in many places, I can't go through all of them now, Allah talks about the importance of zakah in your life. Zakah as the monetary aspect and zakah as a principle by which you live your life. In Surah Al-Shams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by seven different things in that surah. وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَا وَالْقَمَرِ إِذَا تَلَاهَا وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّاهَا وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah swears by seven things and then tells us why He's swearing in the ayah after that. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Successful is he who has, this is a very, this is just my translation of it. Successful is he who has paid zakah on his soul. Man zakaha, he who has purified his soul. But how do you purify? You do tazkiyah. You pay your zakah. Waqad khaba man dasaha. And ruined is the one who fills his soul with corruption. Literally, dasaha, he, he, he sticks his head in the, in the sand. So Ramadan is coming to help you purify your soul. Because when you purify your soul, just as when you pay zakah, you purify your whole body. Many times when we think of paying zakah, we think of paying zakah as purifying our wealth. Which is true, right? If you have a tree, the growing of the tree gets to the point where the tree has so many fruits that you have to pick the fruit from the tree in order for it to continue to bear fruit. If you leave all the fruit on the tree, it becomes too heavy with the fruit, it won't produce any more fruit. And zakah is like that for our wealth. If we don't pick the wealth off, no new wealth will regenerate in our wealth, 
no, no, no new wealth will come. But Allah does not say in the Quran that the wealth is what gets purified. Allah says in Surah At-Tawbah, "Khud min amwalihim sadaqa." Take from them, O Messenger of Allah, their sadaqa, their zakah. As many scholars mentioned, sadaqa here means. Now, this is in relation to a specific um, incident with the Battle of Tabuk or the expedition of Tabuk. That I'm not going to go into that. But the principle is the same. They made a mistake. These Sahaba who didn't go out to Tabuk. And Allah eventually accepts their repentance. And as an offer of gratitude, they go and they give money to the Prophet ﷺ to distribute to the people. And the Prophet said, I can't accept this. I don't know what to do with this money. So Allah tells him, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ sadaqa. Take this sadaqah that they're giving you, take it from them, Ya Rasulullah. تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا SubhanAllah. The money that they are paying, or rather you can translate it as, you will purify them, you will cleanse them, and you will purify them by it, meaning by the money. The money they are paying is a means of purifying them from their sin, from their mistake. So the zakah does not just purify your actual money. The zakah purifies you. So if you want to go through the month of Ramadan in a month, as a month where you feel purification happening both in your soul and in your life, you must be committed to paying your zakah. You must be committed to that process of spiritual growth both in your finances and in other aspects of your life which the month of Ramadan allows us to address with the Quran, with the Salah, with the Saum, with the fasting. It's like a, it's like a, a lab. It's a, it's a whole month of training of spirituality, a month of training of purification. And if we take it as such, we will come out of the month inshallah ta'ala purified compared to where we were when we entered into the month. And Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا How successful is he who has purified his soul. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whose souls are purified. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa barik lana fi ma a'tayt wa qina wa asrif anna sharra ma qadayt فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا الله نستغفرك ونتوب إليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار برحمتك يا عزيز يا غفار اللهم اجعل القرآن ربيع قلوبنا ونور صدورنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر الإسلام وأعز المسلمين اللهم انصر المستضعفين والمظلومين في كل بلاد وكل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح قامت الصلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استوى اعتدله